Tahoe. He came out of the Chevy Tahoe running with a 40 ounce in his hand and just boom, cracked it on my brother's head. Right here, dude. And my brother knocked out. I'm Chicano. And this is paradise. Yeah, this is paradise, but then this is real paradise right here. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With him as your uh, savior, as your main focus in life, being rooted in Christ, you can assure that paradise is wherever you go. So today I'm gonna talk about, you guys seem to like these stories, man, about my past. So that's definitely what I'm gonna give you guys. Um, by far the, the most popular. Let me get some with the, the beautiful skyline in the back. Look at that. You see that? Look at those pink uh, skies. My wife calls them uh, cotton candy skies. But yeah, this is a story. Um, like I was saying, there's one that I dropped. Um, didn't get much uh, love, but I think it was my energy. I was very low, it was early in the morning, couldn't sleep. So I'm gonna try to come with a little more energy this time. And this story is about um, Sereno. You know, like I, I told you guys, I used to get around, man. I wasn't one of those type of dudes that, that um, one of those vatos that just kicked it in the hood, you know? Um, I went out and I went to other hoods. So my face is known at, in different types of hoods everywhere. East side, Boyle Heights, uh, South Central, uh, West side, everywhere, downtown LA. And so this is uh, Sereno, you know, um, I went to El Sereno Middle School. So even though I lived in Pico Union, I used to get bussed over there because I was part of the, the gifted magnet program. And so they would bust me over there. And at this time, I was already heavy into mobbing in junior high, man. It was like, started in seventh grade um, and I got really into it. And so um, I, I got a bunch of dudes into it. I've always been a, a leader, so to speak. Now I'm just using my leadership skills for some good back then i was just a knucklehead but um yeah so i uh, got a, a group of uh, kids that's what we were a group of kids together and we started mobbing the the, the school we first started mobbing the school took it to the streets and when you cause a lot of noise the one thing that happens is um you start attracting eyes that don't really like what you're doing and especially if you're young if you're young and putting out putting in a lot of work um, as far as graffiti, vandalizing, the older homies for sure don't like that, especially if you're doing it in their barrio. And if you guys know, Sereno got their barrio on lock, you know, and I'm talking about Sereno Ripa. Um, they had uh, the Lowell Street gang, you know, the Green Light gang. They were fucking crazy and all that, but they just, they were just like up in the hills, you know, um, but Sereno has Sereno on lock. The mid cities, I mean the mid cities, excuse me, uh, Metro, Metro will come from the other side. And towards the end, dude, Metro started getting pretty deep. It started getting pretty deep, and uh, those dudes were uh, knuckleheads too, man. They were down to down to kill, you know, shoot to kill, you know. They were down to blast, all that. But so we started making a lot of noise, and then uh, they, you know, they started sending uh, messages to us, uh, the older homies through the kids, and so we didn't care. We kept mobbing and shit, you know. And so then um, a couple older guys came uh from from the high school which was wilson they came down and came down on us when we came out of um we got when we just got out of school and they told us hey hey this is your, your one and only um warning after that you guys are gonna get what's coming and this and that and uh we didn't stop we didn't stop so then um, a couple of my homies got jumped and they got jumped pretty bad so then that's when they put me on the spot they're like hey we've been riding for you uh what's gonna happen what are you gonna do you know what I mean? And I was like, man, I was young. I was what, 13, 14? Um, and I was like, I'll, I'll think about it, man. We're gonna do something for sure. You know, I don't know what it is, but we're gonna do something about it. And these these were older dudes, you know, and they were from Sereno. And so um, we didn't know, I didn't know what to do. So then what I did is I took it back to the homies back in Pico Union, set up a, a meeting. And so then we could uh, get down, we could all get down. And so I was like, you know, and then the beef will be squashed and then you guys can stop mobbing and that's it. And we're like, I'm down for that, you know? This was like, I was, I was down for it, you know? I was down to protect my reputation and the homie's reputation and, you know, prove that we could scrap and that we're down to get down and all that. And so I went back and I told all the homies and I told them, 
you know, hey, we're gonna set up a meeting and you guys are gonna get down with the fools that that um that, that jumped you guys one on one. And if anybody else wants it, anybody else wants it, they're gonna get it too. And so um we did that and they got hyped up. They were all hyped up. Yeah. Like, they you know they saw that I came through from or whatever. And so then we I got the homies together and we set up a, a meeting in El Sereno Park. And um fucking Sereno rolled deep, man. They rolled deep. And they were all about high schoolers and above. Uh, there was a couple of the, of the uh, youngsters, the middle schoolers, that we knew, that knew them, that were around, but they were kind of like in the back. They weren't even getting involved. And it was me and it was like, you know, all us junior high schoolers, and then uh, two of the older homies, which was my brother, and then Chato. And so that was it, really. You know, it was just us, uh, just my, my older brother, uh, Debo and Chato. And, um, they called him Pooh back then, but he's from 18 now. Jumping. He started jumping uh, the, the homies again, cause they were deep and they were obnoxious, man. They were obnoxious. They were deep, they were drunk. They were playing music. They came in like all kinds of like ramplas, all kinds of fucking whips. And um, they came deep, you know, and we were in their hood and we weren't scared. We still got down with them or whatever, you know? And um, so then my brother got in, my brother got in and my brother, he was, they call him Devo because if you guys seen that movie Friday, that's basically how he was amongst us. You know, he was tall. He was like six foot one. You know, he played football, tight end. You know, um, so he had our back. And um, he he went in there and you know he told him, hey man, calm down or whatever. You know, you guys can't be doing this. And then a, a fool named Rhino. Yeah, if you're from Sereno, you know you know about Rhino. He came in and then he's like, hey, what what are you doing? You know, coming at these youngsters. And he was older. He was like. He was older than my brother. I think he was a little bit older than my brother at the time. Cause my brother must have been like, at that time he must have been like 20, you know, 20 or 21 around there. And this Rhino was a little older, maybe like 23, I don't even know. But um, he's like, I'm just trying to separate them, dude. You know, you guys are jumping them. And they started talking shit, ah, fuck you, you know, this and that, you know, you guys are bees and this and that. And so um, my brother got down with him. He got down with Rhino. And he was, he was whooping on Rhino. He was whooping on Rhino, and then Rhino, what he did, he pulled out a chain to get down with my brother, and they started squabbing, and they got my brother, he got him with a good punch with the chain, and then my brother fell, and my brother already had a bad shoulder from playing football. He dislocated his shoulder, and he could uh, he never went to get it fixed. So that was always an issue for my brother. No matter what we would do, we'd be playing basketball, and oop, his shoulder ah oh, and he'd be like in pain and so much pain you know because of from what from what i could see my brother didn't really complain about pain but whenever his shoulder got dislocated he will complain and so um he started fighting with one arm because his, his shoulder was down like this and he just started fighting with one arm and he was still giving him a good scrap and so then um uh, rhino got him on the floor and then a fucking dude oh this is what i'm saying about the fools from sereno at least at least these dudes that i dealt with I don't even know what they call him, but he came out of, uh, he, it was like a, a Chevy Tahoe. He came out of the Chevy Tahoe running with a 40 ounce in his hand and just boom, cracked it on my brother's head right here, dude. And my brother knocked out and he still, and Rhino still kept hitting him while my brother was out. And then Chato came in and Chato started scrapping with him. And Chato must've been like, I don't know, 16, 17, you know, he wasn't much older than me. And he started getting down with this old ass dude, you know? He started scrapping with him and shit. And so then um, the dude, some dudes pulled out the heaters while they were kicking it behind the, the Chevy towel. They pulled out the heaters and shit, you know, trying to scare us. And we're like, hey man, I just went straight to my brother. Hey, cause my brother was bad. He was bad, dude. That like, that thing um, cracked his whole like skull right here and he was bleeding bad. And his face got swollen, like the, the worst swelling you could think of. And almost instantly, and so I was scared, man. I thought my brother, well, I thought he was out. I thought he was he was dead, all that blood and stuff. You know, I'm just a youngster. And so I was waking him up, and they were all talking shit, laughing and all this and all that. So they got the upper hand that day, but I'll end it with this. So, and that's all I'm gonna say. But I'll end, I'll end it with this. Uh, two weeks later, um, a rhino got smoked. Rhino uh, got smoked, and I don't know who. I don't know who, but uh, he got smoked. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that story. Uh, you know, that's all it is, man. Just uh, 
couple of knuckleheads, Kiko Union, you know, um, life and death, just like that. One day you're alive, the next day you're not. So moral of the story, uh, don't be a dumbass, don't be a knucklehead. And if you're out there on the streets doing dumb shit, understand that your life can end just like that. From one day to the next. One day you're on top of the world, and the next day you're not in the world. So hopefully that's a lesson for you guys. And also, um, you know, you don't you don't gotta be doing that, guys, for real, man. I wasted um a lot of my, my youth doing that. But then also is the after effects of that type of lifestyle, man. The after effects of that type of lifestyle is uh PTSD. You know, I think I had it worse after living all that. Because when you're going through all that, it's a thrill. You're having fun. You're developing a name. You're developing a reputation. You know, you're out there on the streets. You know, people know you. People recognize you. People hear stories about you. You know, the word spreads. Your, reputa your reputation precedes you wherever you go. So that inflates the ego. You know what I mean? Women are attracted to you they know what you're about you know and it's like and you get caught up you get caught up in all that and luckily for me like god was taking care of me was protecting me because there was people out there that you know really didn't like me and there was people out there that really didn't want me here on earth and so um you know my mom's prayers back then protecting me when i was a knucklehead i still had god in mind but i went through a stage where you know i put god to the side the devil but I did things that a person who follows Christ wouldn't be doing. You know what I mean? So, and I enjoyed being bad and destructive during that phase. And then later, once your um, once your your conscience starts to kick in, once you're trying to do better, um, it really messes you up. It starts to haunt you, the things you did in your past, and you can't sleep at night. You have nightmares. Um, you develop anxiety and depression until you come to the Lord. Once you give your life to the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all that disappears. All that, and I'm talking about really adhering to God's message. Like reading scripture, basing scripture on your life, practicing what you read in real life. You know, that's what you got to do. That's how you develop the, the Holy Spirit. That's how you, you, um, you call on the Holy Spirit. You read scripture, you call on the Holy Spirit. But once he does enter your life, he's gonna guide you. You know what? Whenever I would do wrong, the Holy Spirit will part. So it got to a point where I just stopped doing wrong because I never wanted the Holy Spirit to leave. You know, and that's called spiritual training. You no longer sin. It's gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna say, oh, you no longer sin, you know, uh, Brother Lazarus. And I'm gonna say, no, I no longer sin um, willfully. And I no longer sin by accident. Um, what's difficult for me at times is, is uh, love thy neighbor, right? Love thy neighbor. I get annoyed with uh, neighbor's loud dog. You know what I'm saying? The neighbor's rooster. Um, things like that. You know, that's, that's where I struggle with. And that's how deep my connection is right now that I'm trying to love thy neighbor, which is for me, like the most difficult thing. It's not that I'm self-centered, it's just that I'm very um, introverted. I'm very to myself, and so um, I respect my peace. And that's what I'm struggling with the most right now. You could be struggling with something else, you know? <sighs> Drug addiction, um, women, you know, um, vices, all kinds of vices, uh, just, and, and the spirit ain't there, you know? But once you welcome the spirit in, once you call on Jesus, and you give your life to the Lord, I can guarantee you that the blessings will start to show up in your life in ways that you could never even imagine. Um, don't be a point like it is with me right now where you'll pray and your prayer will be answered almost instantly. And it'll be in his time. And you can, it's not like a genie, hey, I pray and boom, there it is, whatever I prayed for. And you have to pray within God's will. You can't pray for a Lexus, you can't pray for a Bentley, you know, you can't pray for a Lamborghini, because that goes against God's teachings. You know, I, I come from a Franciscan Catholic background, you know, and Jesus, what does he teach? 
Jesus doesn't teach, um, sorry to say, you know, what Joel Osteen lives, that life that he lives. You know, he doesn't teach that. What you have, you give. That's being Christ-like. What you have, you give. You know what I mean? You don't try to hoard it. Loving money is a sin. You can't love both God and money. Remember that. You can't love both. It's been written. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that story. Like always, I always try to end it with a positive message. And that positive message is and will always be our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Your brother Lazarus, I'm out. Just look at that sky. Oh my God, that is beautiful. That is a cotton candy sky right there, look at that. Thank you, Jesus. God the Father, you are everywhere.